Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. As always, this is brought to you on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify. I am your host, the mediocre swimmer, Scott, and with me, as always, is swimming, training, coaching, and superstar swimmer, Dan. Oh, superstar. I'll yeah. take that. Yeah. You, you like your new introduction. I like that. Actually, I'm we'll in, do I'm this every mood. week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you all the plaudits I can. I'm in a good mood. It's been a good week. Perfect. Well, actually, it's good that you're in a good mood. The weather outside is pretty bad. Yeah. We do apologize if you uh, hear yeah. any wind in the microphones or on the recording. I it's... don't know what the storm name is this time around. Oh, whatever it Kira, is. There's... Dave, whatever. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's trees down everywhere, but we're just going to yeah. crack on. Yeah, we've, well, made, we've we'll, made it here. We'll use your positive mentality right now and we'll go yeah. with it. Let's go yeah. with it. Um, so this week's episode, we are going to look into our kind of swimming idols. We are. So why we started swimming, these kind of people influenced us, um, swimmers we looked up to when we were swimming, mm-hmm. um, and also kind of just general idols from our life. Yes, yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be just swimming based. It can be from all walks of life. Yeah. I think we've written down. We've written yeah. down four main idols we have, haven't we? Yeah, four each yeah. Um, on that topic. The first yeah. one kind of overlaps. We both... We share the same idol, don't we? Yeah. So we were from an era... Most people listening will, will have heard of Phelps. Yep. Um, but the first actual superstar of swimming, Ian Thorpe. Was Ian Thorpe. He yeah. was, yeah. So he was our... Or uh, definitely my reason... That I got into swimming. He yes, was the first yeah. swimmer I saw on TV. I think this is the reason why I was a freestyler because I used to watch his stroke and it was pretty perfect, actually. And of yeah. course, when he wore that dolphin skin, shark, shark skin, skin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever he wore, it, but it, you know, it he stood out to me. Absolutely, yeah. Just of like, course, if he's in lane four, it's the first place you're going to yeah. look, isn't it? So I've actually got a funny story about Ian Thorpe. Oh yeah, go on. Um, so my not my relation to him, but the, he was such a big idol to me at the age of like 12. Yeah. So his nickname is the Thorpedo. Thorpedo. Because right. of how fast he went through yes, the water. Yeah. Um, as a 12 year old boy, I was like, oh, that's such a cool name. So I made my first ever email address name, Scorpedo, for oh. Scott at the start. And that 12 year old boy, oh, boy. at an uh, all boys school, yeah. <laughs> that did not go down well. <laughs> Didn't you go through a phase of Super Aquaman as well? I still got that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so my, my nicknames and emails that I use, yeah, swimming. Yeah. And Ian Thorpe was the basis of my first email address. Oh, Didn't dear. go down well. Didn't last long. Oh, I don't have any stories about Thorpe. I just remember that time when he swam at Manchester. I believe it was Manchester when he broke the world re- record. For the 400 free. And he went four, uh, sorry, 340. It was the best swim I've ever seen. Yeah. So he's consistently held, pretty much held 55s. All the way through, yeah. barring a few seconds here and yeah, there. Yeah, so if um, you, if you want to look at perfect freestyle technique... Oh, yeah, that's the first Ian place Thorpe. you should look. Ian Thorpe, yeah. man. People say Pop-Off, and Pop-Off was good, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But I still think, because of four people being the, he's the face of swimming, he's the first place I look yeah. to. I think those Sydney Olympics, the home Olympics, really, I think, in my eyes, cap... cap- mm-hmm catapulted yes well done, got there got there. <laughs> <laughs> catapulted swimming into like a different stratosphere and then a few years later phelps came along yes which is yeah. dan's next idol yes yeah um well being again a, a 200 freestyler mm. he was then in the, the mix again so that so athens race that athens race i think i mentioned it a couple of podcasts ago mm. the, the big three because van hoogrand was also there van hoogrand phelps and Thorpe. Mm. Big race, and of course, um, Phelps was aiming to go the eight golds at Athens, wasn't he? And uh, I think he gave it a go, yeah. He tried to, he got six in the end, yeah, which is you know, but that race good. was a step was, beyond for what was he, 17 at the I time? I think uh, he was he was young, I think he was 18, 19, something yeah. like that, so very young. And you could tell by the Thorpe's celebration how big a race that was when he won it, yeah. Um, um but yeah, on the topic of Phelps, mm. I mean. He's obviously an idol for pretty much every I swimmer. Every swimmer, yeah. The best book I've ever read was his autobiography, After Beijing. Oh, yeah? So I haven't actually read that. You haven't I read it? I should probably read that. So what yeah. I'm going to do is, in this podcast, I'm going to yeah. link this book. I'm okay, going to make yeah. sure Dan checks it out and reads it. I've got it upstairs, actually, so I might get him to have I'll a read. Get that. I'll get that after. So yeah. it, he goes through, basically, every race of Beijing, but uh, makes each race a stage of his life and how he got to each okay, race yeah. and each final and what impact it had on him. Yeah, yeah. So there's a really good story about um, the 100 fly. Yeah. And his main rival for years was Ian Crocker. Yeah, it was, yeah. Um, and Ian Crocker beat him one year at US Nationals. Yeah. And for the whole time between US Nationals and the Beijing Olympics, he had a picture of Ian Crocker on his locker 
at the swimming pool. Oh, sounds with like a, a... With a quote below. Yeah. Like, aimed at Phelps. And that was just motivation enough to go and smash that world record. That sounds like it's um, like a boxing sort of thing. It does. He got so competitive about yeah, it. All, but like... that, that competitive drive is what all swimmers really need. Yes, yeah. He, um... It just reminds me of boxing, because, you know, like in the Rocky films, yeah. he had the, the picture of, was it Club Lang or something like that, or even yeah, Drag or whatever, yeah. and that was the motivation to, you know, obviously yeah, it it's does, a little it, bit different. Cause it's gonna... slightly cliche, but, I mean, you don't really hear about that in swimming. Swimming's quite no. a friendly sport, yeah. so to read this book and kind of open up to the eyes of, I mean, just how competitive this guy is. Yes, yeah. Like, it's a different level. Well, I mean, when he, even when he did the Beijing, what he did in Beijing, um, didn't train that much because of, you know, massive success. Still won four goals at London and then decided yeah. to retire and then came back again to Rio. The, the story behind him is amazing. Yeah, so he's so, like, he's an idol for everyone. I think but so, yes. That, yeah. that book, if you want a gift for a swimmer for birthday, Christmas, yeah. it it is probably, it doesn't seem that dated for me when I read it now. It probably mm. holds up still well, really well. Probably. So yeah. I check it out. We'll leave a link in the uh, description below yes, in the podcast. Yeah. Well, that was one of my idols. That was my second choice then behind Thorpe. So who yeah. would be... Who's your second? Because you um, didn't want so to So mine's probably... No, I didn't want to because I thought most swimmers would have him. Yeah. So mine was kind of a lesser known swimmer. Okay. British, British swimmer. I, I, probably around the world. She's not really that well known. But uh, for me as a sprinter, the way that she went about things, yep. she, she was obviously the smallest swimmer around. Yeah. Um, so my idol is actually Fran Housel. I think she's pretty well known around Europe. She yeah, won, she I think w- she won Commonwealth gold quite yeah, a few times. Yeah, she never times, really but... did it on the Olympic stage. But no. I actually I met her at um, the Jewel in the Pool. Oh yes, yeah. Was that, was that twenty? Well, I can't remember oh, when it was, but twenty ten something. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So Phelps was there. It was America against Europe, and yes, I met yeah. her afterwards, and she she was really nice to me. Yeah, and I remember watching her swim at this event. I was just like, bloody hell, she's tiny, but wow. I did remember she's, actually. Um, she's fast. <laughs> When was it? One Nationals when I was about 16 or something like that. Mm. Um, she was in the race before me. It yeah. was the British Champs or something like that. And she just did the fastest time in the world for the 100 free. Mm. And I was standing behind the blocks as annoyed. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was heat one. When, <laughs> you did well at Nationals. One of those unfortunate years. <laughs> um, and I just thought, wow, what a, what a great swim. Because yeah. she took it out and just held on. And it was, yeah. Yeah, and she wasn't the biggest. And I'm not sure if mm. Dan's told everyone yet. I'm not the biggest. I'm sure you can see on this sofa if you're looking on YouTube. I'm not the tallest person in the world. He's about 5'4", something like that. Well, that's, that's a bit feel. That's what it feels like anyway. <laughs> um, but to see someone who isn't actually physically imposing kind of really impose themselves in the water, was it was really inspiring for yeah. me as, as a kid. She kind of reminds up. me of Hannah Miley because Hannah Miley is, I think, even shorter. Oh, yeah, she's tiny. Um, but it's but a bit, it's a bit a different over a distance. Yes, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. kind of make it up for good technique over a yeah, short right. distance sprint. Yeah. Size, size typically rules all. Normally, yes. But she just had so many fast switch fibers, obviously. Yeah. No. To win the medals that she did and get the times that she swam. Amazing, yeah. really. So I know that's a good choice, actually. Yeah. Yeah, very good choice. Um, I think we've got another role model as well. Both are similar again, but it's our first ever coaches. Yeah. So should we stay with no names? No, I, I <laughs> no know. No names for now. Both, both coaches won't really want to be talked about in this podcast. Yes. Yes. We, yeah. we know them personally now. So that's, that's a good thing about it. That these coaches were the people who brought us through to actual swimming clubs from, or at least me personally, from just swim teaching. Yeah, no, that's exactly the same with me. They brought me into the club scene. And I know my coach personally took me on till I stopped swimming at the age of 17, 18. Yeah. Um, And he was a phenomenal coach. He was very personable, which 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 I found really easy. To speak to, especially because swimming can get tough. Yeah, when I especially joined as... Gloucester, he he was still there when I joined, yes, actually. Yeah. Briefly, then he then he went off. Yeah. But um, my first coach was a little bit different. So it, it's similar in the fact that he taught me how to swim from the age of five, let's say, something like that. Mm. Um, he taught me how to swim, then brought me through the club, and then he left when I was 11. Okay. And that's the reason why I left that club, actually, because he yeah. gave me the technique that I needed. It was then a matter of then... Um, perfecting the technique still but then training the fitness the stamina the speed on mm. top of that technique that's the reason why i left there yeah but um yeah i can't thank that coach enough he's the reason why i got as far as i did i think yeah i Based think technique alone. um i think the reason i still enjoy swimming to this day is yeah. because of 
Absolutely. My, my first coach. And I think it's always good to have a coach who you respect so much that you, you actually look up to him as an idol, as me and Dan do. Yeah. Because it keeps you in swimming for so much longer when you have these coaches around. Yes. And you yeah. can still speak to them. So I was at a smaller club mm. and he, my old coach, he used to teach me how to swim, bring me through. And he coached me until I was 11, like I said earlier. But he wasn't, he wasn't just a teacher and a coach. He also got in and swam sometimes as well to show us and demonstrate. Yeah, and of much. course, younger swimmers from the age of 10 and under, you look up to, I think, oh my God, I want to be that sort of So this swimmer. is much the same as what we're, we're finding out from launching the Propulsion Swimming Channel. Most of mm. um, Dan's, kind of the people you teach now, yeah. they're actually looking up to this channel and seeing Dan and actually the parents are going, oh, wow. Yes, yeah, he, he can swim well, so we're going to carry on using Dan as yes, a coach. Yeah, and I'm sure that's it's kind of gratifying to you. So where I teach, we do twelve week blocks, mm. and on week ten or eleven, I always get in and to show the kids oh, okay. how it's done, sort of thing. Uh, I always do the dives because <clears throat> uh, dives look more flamboyant, don't they? So, <laughs> and then of course they want to try and copy me, and then that's where the belly oh, flops we've start done, happening. We've done that story. Yes, yeah, yeah. So do you reckon your hopefully if they ever go on to create podcasts like this one do you reckon your your name would ever be on the idols list yes <laughs> <laughs> no well wow. i hope so that'd be pretty nice obviously yeah um, um, as long as they stay in swimming we spoke to your old coach the other day and yeah. he, one of his his greatest achievements is actually making sure that people or so his swimmers stay in the sports for the, the long term yeah and that we've actually gained life skills from it yes he, exactly, he didn't yeah. actually see national swimmers or national medals as the biggest goal yeah it was yeah. kind of the life skills all of us took from swimming and the fact that we're all all our swimming friends are the most the people we communicate with the most people we see in touch with the most that's that's a credit to him exactly yeah exactly and, really. and my old coach is exactly the same yeah. he's the reason why i'm still in this yeah. in the swimming world if you exactly. like yeah 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 um, so outside of the swimming world, I know we both have, we, we enjoy to watching a lot of sport. Yep. At our girlfriend's detriment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we both have idols that kind of inspire us as well. Not just, not really for swimming, but more their mentality in sport, let's say. Mentality, not yeah. mentality. That's, but yes. Well, that's yeah, what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll personalities there. and just general skills and uh, attitude towards their sports. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so do you want to go first with yours and then I'll yeah, go with mine? Yeah, so... I'm a big rugby fan. Yes. I'm not sure if it's been mentioned before. Probably I, I has. Said that, well, you said last week that you were very bad at tackling and you got knocked out. So well, No, you yeah. said I was bad at tackling. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so my idol from rugby is actually Dan Carter. Yeah, I can imagine that. So yeah. he is a bit of a quiet superstar. Mm. So he is the best number 10, in my opinion, to ever play the sport. But he doesn't brag about it. You don't hear anything. No. He's a very no. quiet kind of... Humble. Som- yeah, that's yeah. the word I'm looking for. Yeah. A very humble superstar. Yes. And yet he's come back from so many kind of career threatening injuries yep. to still be playing now yep. at the age of 36, 37. I, Again, that's the whole long term longevity in yeah. the sport. Yes. He's, yeah. He is in Japan playing it now, but it's a bit right. different. Yeah. But the way that he kind of led this, this incredible all black team, but very quietly led it, he was not the one who you outright said, oh, he's the leader on the pitch. But then yeah. by his actions, he was the leader. Mm. Yeah. So that that was my inspiration, kind of, you don't need to make a big song and dance about how good you are. Yep. Your actions will kind of show that. that well, that's what I took away from him. In terms of then the humbleness, I guess my role model or idol is a little bit similar in terms of that. Yeah. So mine would be Federer in okay. the tennis. So there's no sort of leadership. Of course, he'll have a team behind the scenes, but on the court, you're by yourself. He's and more... He kind of sets example to others. Yes, it's exactly. And I think, role. yeah. So that's the reason why I liked him. And he just looks, it looks effortless when he does his back, backhands, forehands, all the rest of it. it. Just the technically looks absolutely phenomenal. It's a technique man over here. Yeah, well, that's part. That's probably the reason why I like <laughs> yeah. him. Technique um, over everything. And he's currently the best of all time. Just about. De- depends if Nadal <laughs> or Djokovic catches him. But <laughs> depends when you're listening to this. Even still, for for the... Duration, especially when he, when he won Wimbledon so many times, he was the best by a, by a distance during yeah. that period. Yeah, by, a, by a mile. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. he's always a joy to watch. We've actually seen him at Wimbledon. Yes, that, yeah. That was a pleasure. His his persona on, on course, outside the course, is just, yeah. Someone to look up to. So, Absolutely. again, it's kind of really two humble sports stars that, yeah. that yeah. everyone should look up to for their personalities and the way they conduct themselves. They yeah. are the best around. Yeah, that's right. But they don't need to shout about it at all. No, no. It, it, well, they don't really... need to because everyone else can do it for them. 
<laughs> I find <laughs> people, people like us. Make yes, yeah. Woo! Woo, Federer! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, there is one idol I really wanted to put on this list. Okay. Because when I was growing up, he, he was the big sprinter, the big boy of the pool. Who... Who's this? Um, Roland Schumann. Oh, shoot. Yeah, he was quite good, wasn't he? Yeah. Yes. So he yeah. was my swimming superstar kind of, wow, that's yeah. what a sprinter can do. Wow, that looks amazing. However, yes, this heard links about this. into the news yeah. literally a few hours before we started kind of recording, recording this yep. podcast. He's actually now being banned for drug use. Yeah, it's so a shame. he is firmly off my list. See, I didn't realise when this news came out, I didn't realise he was still swimming. He, what he, is actually, he now? 30, he's 39. 39. 39. But so, he actually tried to go to Rio. Yeah. He is still swimming. He tried to go to Rio, but didn't qualify. Right, so okay. he was still trying to go to Tokyo um, and got banned for a metabolic substance. Steroid, or some, probably. Yeah. Some sort. So how long is his ban? Um, his ban's only a year. Just one I year. Hate. See, this is the problem. And it's backdated to last May. Right, which means he's eligible for the Olympics. Ah, oh, see, I just don't understand he it. Probably see, one won't of the qualify. things because uh, I'm a boxing fan. You know, um, Anthony Joshua was going to fight Jarrell Miller. Yeah, and he got caught for well, such I and such that's, three different drugs. That's even scarier. But he was only banned for six months, and you think? I think that's scary. These sports are allowing these people to do it, have a tiny minuscule ban, or then come back stronger. You yeah, know? they've had, just, they've got this physical backlog. Yeah, of advantage. Yeah. So I, I don't quite understand why the band's only a year. Maybe it's a substance. Well, that, that'll take him to 40 way. years old then. So whether he wants to. But like you say, it'll be, it's backdated, it'll be before so it, the Olympics, wouldn't it's, it? It runs out in May this year. So <laughs> I mean, I, like he was an idol, but no. We, we, shame, don't, we, we, don't, we don't appreciate that no. on this podcast at all. No, I think we said that about FM over. And yeah, we did. on Erming and I were about Sun Yang, but he wasn't actually... Um, court we, was we don't know what's going on there. Yeah, we might do yeah. in a few years' time. Who knows? Yes. Um, yeah. But you actually have a more kind of positive story in the news. That one's really shaken me. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Yes. Well, actually, it's it's based on uh, a meet that's happening in France in Nice. Yeah. Um, some people may have already heard of it, but um, they've taken twenty English young swimmers over there. Oh, so Swim England. Swim England have yes. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Um, and they're receiving expert coaching over there trying to get as much experience as possible at the highest level, the best swimmers in France and guests around the world. Yeah, I was going to say, it's it's known as a big international meet. Of, yes, kind yeah. of It is the first meet, really, that traditionally kicks off the swimming season. Yeah. Really. So for these 20 swimmers, the aim is to try and get them ready for the Olympics in 2024. In Paris. Which I think is in Paris, yeah. isn't it? Yes, yeah. Okay, so that's so, a really good experience. Oh, it's a very good experience, yeah. Because I know... Back when we were swimming, there was a squad called um, Tokyo 2020 or Swim 2020. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we, we, had, we knew someone who was, one yeah. on it, was um, on it. Yeah, so it kind of gives them exposure to this really highly professional swimming it's, world. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sort of giving them um, a look into a professional lifestyle. Yeah, kind which of you wouldn't really get from just racing in this country. So taking yeah. swimmers abroad... Um, and racing against the best is the best way to Well, we said this in the training camps last week, didn't we? Mm. Where you kind of have your own independence, and I think that's what they're trying to get, because some of these swimmers are so young that they've never actually been away from their parents. Mm. So it's a big learning curve for them. They're being... um, The head coach of these 20 swimmers is Amanda Booth. Okay. don't know if you've ever heard of her, but she's um, she's a coach at Oxford, um, and she's got quite a good reputation. So hopefully... She'll influence her. She's not just by herself. I think there's five or six coaches helping her. Oh, for 20 swimmers? For 20 swimmers, yeah, oh, I think so. Good. Yeah, yeah. So they're getting all sorts of support. They've got like a strength and conditioning coach, a physio. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, nice. so they're getting a the job lot. Yeah, again, like we, we follow Energy Standard quite a lot on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I saw that a few of their swimmers were there. Yeah. So it it is a huge meet. It's, it's, good, it's just yeah. good exposure. It's great so, exposure. yes, I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so to bring this podcast to a close... Yep. As always, Dan's tutorial of the week. What do you have yes. for us? Yes, what this is week? the tutorials this week? It is dolphin, isn't it? Yeah, it is yeah. dolphin kick. This is our first drill, our first butterfly drill. Um, it's just the, the simple thing that you might do in the learn to stage swim uh, stages. Um, just trying to get bo- your body used to the undulation okay. movement in the water. So a very, very simple bit. Very bit. simple. So your hands going by your sides. So you're just focusing on body position and just trying to get the movement from, I say it in a tutorial, but it starts from your thoracic spine right at the top of your spine, 
and it's kind of goes right the way through your body like a like a mexican wave is how i've described it in there i think you have yeah, <laughs> yeah. um so if you want to check out that tutorial as always it's up on our youtube channel yep. the links to it are in our description of this podcast they are yeah um and that actually brings this podcast to a nice neat ending it does that was quite quick actually yeah i've no idea how long it was but uh, oh, we'll find out later we'll find out <laughs> <laughs> yeah as always, if you could subscribe to us on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts, that would really help us out. Yep. Um, and you can hear more stories about swimming and kind of the news of swimming every week from us. Yes, well, we had a shout out last week for Adam, who did his swim, didn't he? Did, yeah, did really, he did amazing. really, really well. So if anyone has any more shout outs, we'd love to give them out. No problems. There is a swimathon coming up, which I believe at the end, the end of March. Yeah. So if anyone's got a really good cause or any charities yeah. that they're raising money for, contact absolutely. us on. Yeah, you can contact us on our Facebook and Instagram feeds. Yes, yeah. We we will get back to you really quickly. Absolutely. Dan's always scrolling through there to <laughs> give out county <laughs> messages. Yeah. Oh, that's a good. Yeah, that's a good point. There are loads of county medals again. So well done to all county medalists. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's great to see loads of PBs, lots of smiling faces. Yeah. Amazing to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and from me, though, to end this podcast, I will see you in seven days. And we'll catch you on the next one.